welcome you to the Sunday School Session of New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church where Reverend Ronald Spees is our pastor. And we have been dealing with lessons that focus on God, how God frees and redeems. And the freedom God offers us that we're going to look at today is the freedom from sin. Freedom from sin, coming from Romans, the sixth chapter. Uh, to be free from sin means you're no longer controlled by sin. And sin doesn't have complete power over your life. Uh, now, when we think of sin, uh, my mind went back to where the first sin comes from, the very first sin. And I took it all the way back to that um, beautiful, the most beautiful angel in heaven, um, an angel called Lucifer. Uh, Lucifer was so beautiful, I I'm thinking that maybe he caught a, 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 his reflection maybe in one of the pools of heaven or in a... Uh, they have uh, used uh, precious stones uh, for building material in heaven. And maybe he saw that in heaven also has transparent gold, uh, which would be like a mirror. And maybe Lucifer saw his beautiful self in there. But anyway, uh, uh, Lucifer became enamored with himself. He fell in love with himself. He got to the point where he loved himself more then he loved God. And whenever you love anything more uh, than you love God, you're on a downward road. Uh, but Lucifer fell in love with himself. And as he was up there and looking at the worship that God got him, he, he wanted that. And he, he wanted, he saw God on his throne high and lifted up. And he wanted that. Only he didn't want God's throne. He wanted to be above God's throne. And it just grew in him. And he, he must have been very beautiful because he's able to convince a third of heaven's angels to follow in with him to think that he could be above God. But he found out that nothing ever has been or ever will be greater than God. Amen. And when their rebellion flared up in heaven, the only thing that happened was him and his followers were kicked out of heaven. Um, and so he's lost his heavenly home. And so now what? How do you get back at God? He's bigger than you and powerful than you. What you do? His attention was drawn to a brand new creation on the planet Earth. He saw some humans there. His thought was, well, I can't be God, but I believe I can do a little something with them. So Lucifer, after he's kicked out of heaven, became Satan. And the angels that followed him became demons, and their focus was drawn to uh, earth. And uh, God had given uh, Adam the, the command about not eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, uh, which Satan heard that. So he went into the garden, didn't go to Adam, went to Eve and questioned her about that one rule God had given about not eating from that tree. And he suggested to her that God's trying to withhold something from you. You're missing out. You ought to try that tree. And she believed his lie. And she ate of it and also gave to Adam. And sin entered um, God's new beautiful creation. Um, the world and its inhabitants became broken and dirty. And death became the new rule over God's creation. And sin and death continues today. Um, evil seems to be flourishing and spreading unchecked in our society. As I thought about how evil is spreading over our society, um, I thought about something um, that I did last week. Um, I, and last week was, a, 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 we were in springtime and the weather's wonderful. And I decided to do something that I do once a year. After much soul searching and contemplation, uh, my once a year thing, I decided to wash my car. <laughs> so I got my little cleanser and went outside and made up my little clean and started on my car. And with my first wipe on my car, I immediately regretted making that decision. I said, I should have paid somebody to wash this dirty car. Because if you wash your car once a year, it's going to be pretty dirty. It mounds is silver. But anyway, I, 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 I worked.
worked on it and I made up my mind of I've got a plastic white bench on my uh, to decorate my porch, my front porch. And so the last time it had been washed was the last time I washed my car. So I decided I was going to wash that bench, which of course it wasn't white because if you wash something white once a year, well, it's not going to be white anymore. It's going to be a dirty gray, which that was. So after I finished, how it took me about an hour working on that car, I attacked the bench. And I had took my cleanser out there, uh, which was pretty full. Cause like I say, this is a once a year thing that I do. And I set it there beside the, the chair. And what, even though I had my little bucket of water, it's like it wasn't strong enough to get that dirt. So I was pouring cleanser on the cloth. And um, I set it down there beside the um, bench open. And of course, the thought came to me, you need to move that because you're going to kick it and knock it over. I said, oh, I'm not going to knock that thing over. It'll be all right. I'm not going to be that long. But sure enough, as I went back and forth, uh, walked over there to, to wash off that old dirty bench, I did. I kicked that cleanser bottle over. And all of a sudden, cleanser was running down my little walkway. And um, I, I didn't know what that concentrated cleanser would do to the lawn. I said, I didn't want all that soap in there. So I rushed and got my little, after I set the bottle up quickly, I rushed and got my little water hose and started spraying down my walkway, which I was aggravated with myself. I said, it's hard enough cleaning the car. It's hard enough cleaning this old bench. But now here I am out here washing the sidewalk. What's the point? But anyway, I did, I sprayed that water down the, the side, the uh, walkway, and kept it from going over into the grass. So by me being able to spray that water, I checked, I stopped the spread of that cleanser. Don't know what it would have did to grass by not done anything, but I just didn't want it over there. And as I thought about this lesson and how evil uh, seems to be flourishing and spreading unchecked in our society, I thought about how that cleanser spread down my walkway. And it's like with the evil in our society, there's no water holes to spray and check it. It's just spreading unchecked. And the goop is just sinking into our neighborhood and our cities and our state as the evil just spreads. It's like the same way I kicked over that bottle of cleanser. It's like somebody has just kicked over a container of evil, Holding evil, concentrated evil, and it's spread. And we've always, it's always been evil, but it's like it's been kicked up a notch these last two years. We're hearing stuff that we normally don't hear, such as like I've been in the school system, I was in the school system 12 years, and also four years in college. But of, out of all the years I was in school, I never heard of a student bringing a gun to school and killing one of the other students. And this is what we hear now. And it's not just here, it, was, it, it seemed like it was, it was here in North Carolina, then you heard it in South Carolina, then it's in California, it's like something spreading. So it's not like uh, the, the evil that we're used to hearing about, it's like it's been kicked up a notch. Or I think about how some years back, they used to have this little sticker that when they were put on the car windows that said, baby on board. And I guess they did that thinking people would be more careful about their driving to protect the babies. But now we're living in an age where it's like people would kill a child just as quick as they would kill an adult. And we're hearing more and more of that in our parents killing their children. So it's this kind of stuff that we hear as we listen to our nightly news or look on social media. This is the kind of evil that's spreading. And it's like there's no... Um, there's no water holes to wash it away. It's just settling in our cities, in our neighborhoods, and in our states. Um, the evidence of sin's devastation is seen daily. But despite all the wickedness going on in the world, we are not without hope. Amen. Jesus came to Amen. fix our sin problem. Amen. God sent amazing grace in the form of Jesus Christ. Jesus lived the perfect life we couldn't. Jesus took our punishment for sin. Jesus was resurrected and ascended to heaven where he speaks on Christians' behalf. And he is preparing a heavenly home for all who accept him 
as their Savior. All we have to do is trust in Jesus and ask God to forgive our sin. God's gift of grace through Jesus is more than enough for the whole world. There's enough grace to save every man and woman, boy and girl. There's a bountiful supply of grace that hasn't been tapped into. Everybody in the whole wide world can have freedom from sin. Um, and that's the title of our lesson, Freedom from Sin, and we'll be coming from Romans, the sixth chapter. And we may say, well, since all that grace is available to me, um, then I should be able to do whatever I want to do. Jesus has already paid for every sin I've committed, and he has paid for every sin I will commit. Mm -hmm. So I'm free to sin. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at Romans verses 1 through 2 mm -hmm. to see what Paul says to us about that kind of thinking. Uh, verses 1 and 2 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Um, some may say, since Jesus has already paid for my sin, I can go ahead and do what I want. Here's my question. Why do you want to do it? Why do you want to stay in sin? Have you really been changed with that kind of mindset? God's grace can cover your sins, but when you want that saving grace without changing your sinful lifestyle, you want to misuse grace and try to trick God. Why in the world would you think your little puny mind can trick the God who created your mind? God can see through what you're trying to do. Grace is not given as a license to sin. It's a covering to protect us from the consequences of sin. We are free from sin, not set free to sin. If sin wins, it's because we let it by not depending on God, by not trusting God, and by not obeying God. When we give in to sin, we make a deliberate choice to go against God. Think back on when God delivered you, uh, if you claim in salvation. When, think back on when God delivered you and from the torment that you went through. Why would you want to go back into that? The Bible tells about how Jesus gave an example of somebody who's been set free from a demon. Say the demon was cast out. And it's like your spiritual uh, uh, existence has been swept out. The demon's gone. The demon got it. If it's cast out of you, it's going to look for another human host. Because before the demon can do something here on earth, they need a human body to act through, to do their little evil work. So they go looking, and then the demons decide to go back to where it come from. Well, if you don't have a spiritual block there to keep that demon from coming back inside, he'll come back in, and he'll bring seven of his buddies. He said, come on, fellas, we'll live in this person again. And you end up being worse than what you started out. It's best to never start uh, trying to live a Christian life than to start out uh, living a Christian life and then saying, well, I'm tired of that. I'm going on back out here and do what I used to do. You're not going back to the way you were. You are going to be worse than what you were. You don't play games with God like that. So you end up in a worse state when you start out and then you turn back and go back to sin. Uh, let's skip on down to verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, Jesus that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Um, we're in chapter 6, but in the next chapter, chapters, uh, Romans 7, um, Paul talks about how there's no good thing dwelling in the flesh. And he goes on to say, um, in so many words, I don't do the good things I want to do. Instead, I keep on doing the evil things I don't want to do. And then he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Who will save me from this sin that brings death to my body? And he goes on to thank Jesus. Jesus is the one who can save us uh, when that natural inclination to sin rises up in us. And then we're going to skip on down to verse 12, which says, 
um, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Being in union with Christ is to adopt a new way of living. Everyone is tempted to sin in some way. You have no new sin, nothing new under the sun. For those of us trusting in God, he knows how much you can bear. That's a song I love. He knows exactly how much you can bear. And the Bible tells us that with every sin and temptation, God sends a way of escape. So there's no use saying, well, I couldn't help it. If you sin, it's because you choose to sin. Uh, because if you are in a situation, the, the, the Holy Spirit is going to come to you and warn you and tell you that you're where you don't need to be or you're around people you don't need to be. And it's up to you whether you listen. That's the thing. Uh, listening and following his lead. I can look back over my life and I can see where in some situation, I thank the Lord that most of the time I listen to the Spirit, but I can't claim it, stand here and say, well, I've done everything. God has sent warnings my way, or he has warned me about situations, or he has warned me about people. And I, instead of listening to the Spirit, I start debating and saying, well, maybe it won't turn out like that, or maybe I'll, I'll stop before it go too far, or something like that. And that's where you mess up. You have to learn to follow that quiet voice that sends a warning, and that will keep you from sinning. But like I say, we don't always want to listen. We want to debate and question and maybe see how far we can go before things go wrong. But God always gives us a way out. He gives us a way to escape if we just listen to the Spirit and follow his leading. Let's look at verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Discipline. This is what it's talking about, discipline. If Christians willingly submit their bodies to the leading of God, they can rest assured that he has a tailor-made purpose in mind for them. God has something, a special job for you that fits your personality, that fits your talents, your gifts, that fits the way you were raised, or that fits the problems you have encountered. God has something that fits you. There are people you can witness to that I wouldn't be able to relate to, and there are people that I can witness to that you may not be able to relate to, but God can use all of us in different situations. And there is a way for each one of us to glorify God in our own unique, wonderful way. God has a special tailor-made job for you. Now, when you think of tailor-made, you don't think about um, those clothes where you go in the store and they have racks and racks of clothes already him. They already sized and you just have to go and pick the one that fits closest to your size. But when it's tailor-made, somebody measures you, takes a tape measure and they put it around you and they put it down here and they see how tall you are, long you are, round you are, and they make something to fit just you and only you. And that's what God has for us. He has a tailor-made purpose. I can remember um, as a teenager, I would ask, what's the point of me? What's the purpose of me? You know, the devil come and play with your mind. And God showed me my purpose. All of our purpose is to bring honor and to bring glory to God. There's a point to you. There's a reason why God gave you life. And all you need to do is tune into the spirit and find out what that beautiful purpose is. And then we're going to move on down to verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under the grace. Not under the law of sin and death, but under the grace of God. Meaning sin will not be your master. The law does not rule you. God's grace has set you free. And we can thank God for that. Uh, 
we can thank God that sin does not rule over us. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. Uh, we think of death as when we take our final breath um, here on earth. But really, we that's our mortal bodies. But really, we have an immortal soul inside of us that will live forever somewhere. And it's up to you to choose. Your soul's got to have, your immortal soul's got to have somewhere to stay. Where will it stay? So this, uh, so this, when this death, this stopping to breathe here, this is not the end of it. But the real death is eternal separation from God. That's the final death, uh, eternal separation. And Jesus has already fixed it, that we don't have to go through that. So we are not under, as I said, the law of sin and death, but under grace. God's grace can set you free. In 1986, gospel singer Tremaine Hawkins uh, put out a song entitled, Look At Me. Very simple, quick, easy song. And in the song she said, look at me, I have been set free. All my sins are washed away, my nights turn to day. All because Christ has set me free. And then she goes on to say the other lyric, like I say, very short song, simple. She says, you ask me how I can, you ask me why he loves me so. I never know. But his grace has given me security, his precious love rather. And now I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. Then she goes on to say it again. Look at me. I have been set free. This is the only part that's about all she say through the song. All my sins are washed away. My night turned to day. All because Christ has set me free. Yes. We find it natural and easy to make the wrong choice. There is a part of us that wants to do wrong, unfortunately. But every one of us has to choose between good and evil every day. God is praised or glorified when we obey him. God designed us to do what is good and right and to bring honor to him. We go against God's design for us when we sin. He did not design us to sin. We go against that design. Jesus came to help us overcome sin. Let's make up our mind to grow and become more of who God created us to be. Yeah. Just think about how did God create you? What did he create you for? He created you for a wonderful, wonderful purpose. Mm -hmm. We thank you for joining us for this lesson. Um, we're winding up these, lessons, these series of lessons where we look at how God frees and redeems. We hope that you will join in with us and come back and learn more. And we're praying that God will continue to give you a hunger for his word and even more hunger um, for his will yes. and for his glory. Because that is why you were built. That's why you were created. May God bless you and keep you. And we look forward to you joining us again.